So my name's Natasha Grist and I'm the Head of Research in the Climate and Development Knowledge Network. In our group we discussed quite a lot about what local and what indigenous knowledge meant and when we had decided that um, we come to a consensus on this, we thought that the priority was about documenting and integrating local indigenous knowledge and scientific knowledge um, being external knowledge that's generated from scientific institutions at the community level. And we looked at the reason why that was so important to us. There are a number of reasons why we thought it was really critical for this issue to be dealt with now. Firstly, because if you integrate local knowledge with scientific knowledge, it can be far more acceptable to farmers than if you come in with um, a, a set of meteorological office uh, seasonal forecasts, which perhaps might not be put across in the same way that the seasonal um, and indigenous knowledge is understood. So firstly, um, for the acceptability by farmers, and that will help sustainable development, and it's also as a source of information. Secondly, we think that it might improve the accuracy of the information by triangulating between the local and the scientific knowledges. So it allows you to cross-check the reality on the ground and also the science that's being provided because both of those sources of information might have um, lack of certainties or they might be slightly inaccurate for a number of reasons. And thirdly, um, we think it's important because it allows us to test local understandings of climate and weather patterns against uh, the data that we have. There are a number of um, different uh, stakeholders that are involved in this and we, we identified that firstly scientific climate change researchers are important, um, government meteorological offices, uh, councils of elders and village chiefs who would be holders of uh, the long-term information in the particular regions and localities, the Ministry of Agriculture and related extension workers are very important to um, help take the message out in the right ways to the local level and development practitioners who would have um, a long-term experience of engagement with the area and with communities. Okay, so out of those priority stakeholder groups, we um, identified and had a vote in our group that actually the most important message to get through was now to government meteorological offices. And that was to collaborate with local stakeholders, and that includes the village chiefs, councils of elders, um, the extension workers, the development practitioners in any region, in order to integrate the local and indigenous knowledge into the scientific forecasts. And there were some examples given in in our group of some really innovative excellent work being done in these areas in Kenya and starting up in some other countries in Africa so we're looking to develop that work. So one of the issues that we discussed quite a lot in our group was about the um, validity and the accuracy of both of these sources of information and firstly that quite a lot of research now is showing that with um, people's memories and understandings of climate change in, in the past this um, understanding gets less accurate over time. So when people might have quite a good memory of what's happened in the last five years in terms of climate, actually over a whole lifetime period there are um, wide variations sh that have been shown when it's been compared with actual historical data in, in different countries. And secondly, the other area which was interesting to look at is that downscaled local data is um, quite inaccurate from a scientific perspective still in, in many countries in Africa and particularly given that um, the, the data points are very sparse from which data is, uh, is used to then create the downscaled local models.